What is up guys, this is The Awesome Show. I am Zio and today we are reviewing this DC Multiverse Aquaman set for the new Aquaman movie. So we have a set of four, then we have another additional little pack of figures that all are based off the movie version. So they are going to be based off, you know, real life actors and looks and stuff that we're going to see in the new Aquaman movie that comes out in December. So to start off with the set here, of course, we're going to open these and look at each figure. And then we got a Collect and Connect Trench Warrior, which is one of the, like evil, weird bad guys I guess from the uh, movie that you've seen in the trailer and stuff but we're going to start off here so first off we've got Aquaman of course which looks really cool and I love all their costumes I think they did a really good job on like the costuming and everything for this movie I like all the bright colors and they just look really close to the comic book versions but we've got Aquaman and Mura. Then we've got the baddies of Orm or Ocean Master and Black Manta, which again are the two sort of like villains from the Aquaman universe. So that is going to be it for our Collect and Connect set um, that, you know, come with the trench and you can see the trench warriors head there and stuff. And then we also have this DC Multiverse set of figures here. I don't know if this is exclusive to anywhere. There's no stickers on it, but we found these at Target. So I don't know if it's a Target exclusive or anything, but it's another DC Multiverse set. But this is from the Gladiator scene that, again, we've seen part of in the trailer and stuff little um ver uh, little videos or whatever of that in the trailer where we have aquaman and ocean master fighting what i assume to be for the kingdom of atlantis um but yeah so that's an additional little pack we got no collect and connect figure with this one but it does fit in with the dc multiverse and everything so we're going to go ahead and open each one of these like i said then we're going to build the trench warrior at the very end with all the pieces so let's get into it and our first figure up here is Aquaman. Of course, only fitting to go with this set is that we start off with the main man himself. And I have to say, these figures look really good good if you are interested in in Aquaman or if you want to see the movie you have interest in um, getting figures and stuff I would have to say these things are pretty nice um, I will go into this after we do like review of this um, but I want to mention the comparison between these and the Marvel Legends because if you watch this channel we do a lot of Marvel Legends and stuff and I have noticed a little bit of a difference between the two and um, I just want to mention that really quick so first up we'll start off here with the face so there is the sculpt of Jason Momoa of course the only actor I know from this um, set of figures so it's the only one I know but I think um, it looks pretty good his box which I have over to the side here I don't know if I can fit it the figure they have there does not look like him at all and it doesn't even look like this version of him it just looks like some weird generic guy and everything but of course there's the look of Jason Momoa right there and I think they look pretty good you know as well as it could for an action figure and everything I think that looks looks really good. I guess I could have done the side of the box, but anyway, so I think the sculpt looks really good, and they even got, you know, part of his missing eyebrow and stuff that he's got going on and everything, and so that's really cool, and so then we've got the hair there, so the sculpted hair of the brown with a little bit of lighter color on top of it to, you know, add some, like, highlights and stuff, you know, flowing back. Their hair's not as good as Marvel Legends, but it doesn't look as um, really bad or anything. They just don't have as nice a looking hair. And then he's got the beard there, the long brown beard hair and everything there. Then we go into what is his outfit that looks like the classic or more classic Aquaman outfit. And I really like this. So I assume that... We I mean, no spoilers, but I assume in the movie he becomes, you know, the king of Atlantis. And this is going to be his outfit for when he becomes the king, I would assume. I don't really know. But I just love this with the gold and the green. And especially this green on his um, hands and feet looks awesome. And, of course, we'll look at more detail into that. Um, but here we go. We got his um, upper shirt, or I guess here is top, I guess you'd call it, which is all nice and scaly, which you can see the detail. looks like a bunch of fish scales all over him. And it's a nice gold color. It's gold with, like, some brownish red mixed into it but it still looks really nice and I really like it and you can see the seam right down the center there and everything and it just looks super nice and of course the texture is really cool and everything and I really like that you can see on the back there where it turns more gold there um, but that looks nice you can see he's got a color up around his neck and everything then go down we go into the belt which of course has the Aquaman logo on it and it's got a belt here it looks of course like fish bones or something all the way around holding it on and then it's just got this metal plating or this gold plating around it you know covered Covering his hips and then back on his uh, butt there and stuff. Then going down, we got matching, um, which I really like how they've done this. Um, it's different where these are popped out scales. These are like just pushed in little dots, but it gives the scale look. And I really like that. And it's a metallic green color in there, so that's all nice metallic green. Then it carries down on into the boots, as you can see underneath here. 
down into the boots and everything where he's got this green all over it. And so now we'll look at the gauntlets and then the boots and stuff. As you can see there, they look super cool. I love this green color they chose. And I think you can see maybe one on this hand. You can see it's the green on top and it's got a uh, silver underneath it. So I assume they're supposed to be like gauntlets or gloves and stuff. And then have this, this green on top. But the way you can see that the green is shaped and everything, it looks like seaweed. And that's what I love about it. The detail of the sea, which of course this is all just based off the movie. So that's what they do in the movie. It's not like this figure is coming up with this stuff or anything. But that looks, I love that, how it's like seaweed and everything. It fits so well with Aquaman. And I love, you know, just the design. It looks like seaweed growing off him. I forgot to mention, he does have these pads on the back too. It reminds me of like old shoulder pads from the 80s or something on his arms there. And so that's cool. And then you can see it down on the feet as well. As it's got these leafings that are coming off again looking like seaweed. And it looks awesome. And so now that we've looked at pretty much all the figure, that's all that is. Actually, let's continue on with the rest of the stuff. He does come with a trident, which is a different looking trident than he normally has. And it's an actual trident because there's the three tongs and stuff. And then it's a mixture of the gold and brownish red, which again matches his top there. And so I um, would assume this is the true King of Atlantis uh, trident and stuff. And it's got, you know, the candle part here and then the uh, pokers, whatever, down at the end there with the barbs, you know, coming off of it and everything for stabbing that you can put in his hand. I'm not going to do it right now because his hand looks pretty small and it doesn't look like it's going to fit around there. You may have to put it down lower or something. I don't know if I can easily, yeah, you may have to put it down lower like that, but it should go right in the center there. Um, so I'll have to do that some other time. So I'll just kind of stick that back down in there and that looks really nice. And then um, we've got, well, <laughs> I knock him down and then we've got stand back up the spears kind of um, holding down one the leg of the trench warrior so there is just one of the legs we've got what looks like I can't tell if that's the right or left I would assume right leg maybe I can't really tell for sure what leg it is but got one of the leg of the trench warriors and let's just read from box it says half man half Atlantean this colossal warrior has a rightful claim to the throne of the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, but is a self-ascribed outcast in both worlds. So that kind of gives you a little bit of how Aquaman views himself and that he is the you know one of the rightful kings of Atlantis and stuff. But now I want to talk about a sh short little comparison here between these and Marvel uh, Legends. Not like I have any to compare them to or anything, but to me this figure is overall done a lot better. Um, and we'll definitely see it with the next figure too, um, compared to, you know, the Marvel Legends version. So they have all pretty much the same points of articulation, which I forgot to go through. So it does have, you know, the arm shoulder there that can move up and down and it twists around everything. The upper bicep twister there, a elbow joint, it's a single elbow joint, which of course goes with this, um, uh, the gauntlets and stuff, whatever, kind of blocks it off. But it does twist around too, as you can see, which has some movement, or at least I hope it is, and it's not broken or something. And then we've got the hand movements that can twist around and flex as well. We've got some ab crunch going on there on his head, which doesn't move very much because of the hair and then the neck collar or collar around his neck and stuff. But he does have an ab crunch. He can twist at the waist. He's got the um, hip joints there that can move in all the same movements. Thigh twist, double knee joint, which moves a lot smoother and easier just from the start and then foot that can bend back and forth and twist side to side and that's um, one thing I like so it's got all the same joints as Marvel Legends normally do but it's just like built sturdier overall and like it was super easy to get him to stand from the beginning uh, most of the Marvel Legends I have to sit there and mess with for like a minute or two just to try and get them to stand or he was ready to go within seconds and that's how most of the figures are he still has like you know because their joints move a little easier is like weaker so he does you know fall forward and stuff but he's easy just to get stand back up and then there's not nearly as many paint issues going on like we have you know like a little silver spot there um and i don't really remember too much others with this figure in particular i know there are some issues on others but they're not major they're just like little like where paint got where it shouldn't have been um out of nowhere and stuff but it's not that bad and so um i Overall, I like this. I don't know if this is a new version of Marvel Legends or Multiverse. I'm spitting out the wrong thing, the DC Multiverse. Or if they've always been like this, and I just haven't really known since we don't get that many of them. But the figures just overall built a lot better. So, I of the two, I would prefer these figures. But 
they're not as interesting of characters. Like, I really like this set of um, multiverse because I like the way they look and the colors and everything they chose for this set. But it's just like they're not that interesting of characters and stuff compared to what Marvel does where they go, you know, deep into back characters, stuff that you've never seen before. And then, of course, they do the classics and do multiple versions of stuff. They just pretty much do Batman, Superman, you know, Green Lantern, Aquaman, just pretty much all the basics and just repeat that over and over again. And then they do comic versions, but again, they don't look as nice and stuff just because DC has a darker look to it and everything. So the figures just aren't as interesting compared to uh, Marvel's, but to me, their overall look and everything is a lot better. And I just wanted to kind of say that just from noticing from this wave, like I said, I don't know if they're brand new versions or what, um, but I wish Marvel would kind of take a look at these and adapt some of the stuff that they did. But that's going to be it for Aquaman. In the next figure here is of Mura or Mara, 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 I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know how they pronounce the name exactly, but I just call her Mura. But this is the figure I wanted to mention, especially with that last stuff about Marvel Legends, which we'll go to as we review it and stuff, but why I like this version better than their versions, especially of females, because as you can see, she obviously is a female. So, again, the thing I don't like about these figures is that their face sculpts are not nearly as well done, and the hair especially. So there's a look at her face again. I don't know who the actress is, so I don't know how to, like, to compare looks-wise and stuff, but to me that just looks like a Barbie doll face. It doesn't look... Um, like based off anybody or anything and then we go to her hair which again does not their hair does not look anything as, or doesn't look nearly as well as Marvel Legends does and then she's got the crown on her head there because I think she's uh, the queen or princess or something and so that's why she's already got a crown on her head and stuff and I like the little wings off the side there um, it looks like little uh, um, ho seahorse wings and stuff but yeah we'll look at her face and then we do have a picture of her there so there's a look at the actress compared to that to me they don't really look much of anything like again this just looks like a generic like barbie face or something compared to the actress but there we got that then moving on we got the fish scale outfit again and this time this is the indented circles once again like aquaman's pants were and she just got this all over but i think it looks amazing and i love the colors they chose this um like greenish blue or turquoise you could possibly say um metallic color so it looks really nice and sharp and stuff then as you can see here especially on her chest she's got these little indented painted like scales of different blues so there's light blue dark blue and a um medium blue i guess you could say or sky blue possibly um a little lighter than normal blue and i just like that detail put onto it remind looks so much you know like a fish and that's just what it reminds me of like a nice colorful like rainbow fish or something like that but that is her outfit so you can see obviously they had the add the chest in so they left a bare chest up top there um then going down into her gallery she does have these little pieces of uh gold on it i just like gold armor i would assume and stuff doesn't really look like much of anything then again she's got the Atlant atlantean i would say is how you say um logo there or what i call aquaman logo and again it's carried in that blue again from her chest all the way down and i just like that they added that blue instead of just being you know all generic this teal color then going down to the legs you can see we got the legs here continue with that design until you get to the knee then it um switches into you know she's got like knee high boots on but it would have been nice if these were um trained like colored like so if these little lines here were like gold or something but if they're not in the movie it would make sense why they're not um so you know just to add to the um boot here that goes all the way down and then of course they added the high heels because all you know female superheroes have to have high heels for some reason and um, so it looks weird, but at least since because they designed it the way they do, it does help them stand and everything still. And so what I wanted to mention about these figures, like compared to Marvel Legends, is their legs. So as you can see, she is a female and she's not, you know, like a, f a fat person or anything like that. There's no thing to shame her about. Her thighs don't want to twist, though. That's the only issue with this figure. There it goes. Um... But, so she's skinny and everything, but they did not give her super skinny legs, and it looks proportional, like it looks right to me, like it doesn't look too weird or anything. But because of that, her legs aren't messed up, and so she stands super easy, and then the box didn't bend her legs, so you know that you can't uh, not stand her up, like we saw in the last set with the... Um, what was it uh medusa how her leg was all messed up and i could barely get her to stand and everything and so now of course now that i twist her legs i messed them all up um there we go and so she has a much easier time of standing and everything that's just what i mentioned out though because the female marvel legends are an absolute like horrible to deal with and the boxes just destroy their legs and everything but that's it for mara so let's go ahead 
and or Mara, whatever, and go into her stuff. So she comes with her um, staff, I guess. It's, you know, like a trident, but not got the point. So it's got a point on one end, and then the little, you know, stab with the barbs on the end of it, which we saw this in the um, last set of Justice League figures that they made. There was a Mara, and she comes with the same uh, spear, or whatever you want to call it. So she's got that. Then she, which she also came with the same one, but I think these look better. She came with the hands that are shooting water out, so you can attach these on instead if you want it to be like she's shooting water. And I like the way they designed the water, so it's the clear blue with the um, like gray color at the end because you know it's the like cloudiness of the water, so it's not coming out clear. Then it's reaching the end where it's going to start falling off and dissipating stuff. That's why you get the color like that and everything. So it comes with those hands, and again, it's got the matching. Uh, color there of her outfit, not just all pe uh, peach color, whatever you even call it. And then she comes with both hands of the Trench Warrior. So we've got the right and the left hand, which it looks like they're both the same direction, but I assume you can just twist one around and get the proper one, I would assume, because they look like the exact same hand, so I don't really know. Yeah, they're supposed to be this um, two different hands, but they must just be twisted or something. But we got that for the Trench Warrior. And from her box, it says, Princess of the Underseen Kingdom of, I don't know how to say it, Zebel maybe? Mura has the gifts of hydrokinesis and extraordinary powerful ability to manipulate water. This is why we see her, you know, shooting water out of her hands or controlling water, as you can see there. So that's going to be it for Mura. And next up we have Orm or Ocean Master here, which is again one of the Aquaman's villains and I assume he'll turn into a villain in the movie like it seems from the trailer that he's you know trying to be a good guy and everything but then Aquaman comes along and he ends up you know I guess quote in the, at the end saving the day and everything. So here we've got Ocean Master and I think this looks super cool and looks very um, similar or close to the comic version so I really like this a lot so we'll take a look at his face here so here we've got his face with his helmet on again I really like how it's got these like spikes coming in off the edge again it reminds me of like a seahorse and stuff and then it's got the large spike at the end it's like a shark fin up there on the helmet and I like the gold metallic uh silver and stuff there and the red eyes and you can see part of his face there and then going down into his outfit you got some more of the silver there and then it carries on throughout his whole entire outfit but then he's got the purple and that's what i like the most because purple is a color i like a lot and so i like how they have this um purple here so they've got a darker purple on his actual like scales and again he's got these scales so you can see them popping out and everything and then what are supposed to be like the ab parts he's got a little light or a lighter color of purple and then um off of that it goes into the like indented dots as you can see here on his arm and then I like how they put the real dark purple in those dots as well similar to what they did with uh, Mura and stuff and I really like just the look of that that carries again all, every time you see that it just carries all the way through so I really like that detail and design and everything again he's got what I assume to be the Atlantean logo and then we've got the silver and purple carrying all the way down into his chest there or his legs and stuff there those look like faces I almost said like snake faces but it's only got one eye on each side but it, they still look like a face because of the eye and stuff and then you can see his boots and everything there then going to the back we've got a cape on him which again compared to marvel legends their capes pop off and fall off and everything his is permanently attached um the only bad thing is though it weighs him down backwards which i you know said standing wise and stuff which is still pretty easy but um his cape just weighs him down so it's kind of pulling him down backwards and then um he has a messed up foot as well and it's hard to get characters to stand on this fabric I have down also but so other than this figure which does have issues like Marvel Legends do um, so it looks really nice overall there you can see his gauntlets there so it's got the silver with the um, circles in it of the um, under armor or under armor <laughs> or armor underneath it with the gill design and everything and it looks super cool i like how they left those holes and stuff just adds more detail there we've got the gloves again it's the same it's supposed to be like a chain mail design at least from the picture that's what it looks like and that's what his capes designed like as well and it just looks super cool and i like this figure of all it's got all the same joints and stuff as aquaman so we don't have to go into that i forgot to do that on Mur, which she's pretty much the same there's not much difference between her and aquaman and everything the only um difference is just his I guess they do just have one single elbow joint there you can see some paint issues of silver on the back of his arm there um, but that's really about it for paint issues on him and stuff but let's go ahead and see what he comes with now so he comes with his version of a trident which I think is really cool again because of the purple added on to you can see the three tongs there for the trident then it's the purple color down to there and then the handle and then the purple 
spike there at the end as well. I really like his version of the trident. And then he comes with the other leg of the trench warrior there. So I assume the left leg if we did the right leg already. But we've got that leg of the trench warrior. And from his box is the younger half-brother of Arthur, as in Arthur Curry Aquaman. The and the present king of Atlantis, Orm seeks to rule all of the undersea kingdoms and declare himself the Ocean Master. So there, that is pretty interesting how he is the king of Atlantis currently, but he's trying to control all of the ocean, becoming Ocean Master. That's pretty interesting, actually. I really like that. And so that's going to be it for Orm. And now this has got to be my favorite character out of the set, or just figure in general. We've got Black Manta, again, another villain of Aquaman and a guaranteed villain in the movie this time and he's got some pretty cool scenes as we've seen in like the extended trailer and everything so we're going to take a look at him here so there he is his head his giant big manta head as you can see it there and so it's just a big giant uh like helmet skulls i guess you call it. i don't know what you call it. but he's got these giant red eyes as you can see there that of course the guy underneath wearing the outfit can see out of it and i like how they did this it gave him like a water swat outfit is what it looks like and i think that's really cool and fitting for uh black manta and everything it just looks really cool because I'm pretty sure obviously he's not like Aquaman so he can't breathe underwater so he has to have this whole apparatus and stuff but it looks really cool then going down so it's just a simple character as in color wise it's just pretty much all black it's not got much difference you can see some red there on the sides of it kind of designed like gills and everything but going down so we've got what I assume to be the breather so it's like his chest um, not his chest but it's attached to his chest but then it's got two going down into the back where I assume you can see they look kind of like little fans and stuff so it's like stuff I assume to help him fly float through the water and then I would assume it's an oxygen tank as well in here and you can see more of the red on the back there and everything so it looks really cool then it's got tubes coming off everywhere so we got tubes you know coming from here into his gauntlets and then going around up into his chest parts here again what I assume to be for breathing and stuff like that um which would attach into his outfit and helmet and everything for breathing so that just looks really cool going into his arms he got you know some different padding designs and stuff going on he's got these giant gauntlets here that looks like he shoots stuff out of this the one there it looks like a little gun or something and then his hands of course and then go into this side where he's got the sword coming out of that spot there it's a sword sticking out so you can you know fight with that and everything um, then going down to a belt, he's got a utility belt on, of course, with all sorts of different pockets and stuff to hold all different weapons and everything. Then into the legs. It's so weird how it gets into these really fat legs. <laughs> I don't know why they're like that, but they're designed funny, and they have these weird lines across them that look really nice, and I like, you know, adding more detail into it and stuff. Then he's got a double knee joint, and then his feet here, which has, you know, some... Uh, boosters looks like you know to help again to help sw him swim through the water and everything and all sorts of little just details coming off of him and everything adding more design going down into the feet and so again this character looks really nice again he's not the best to stand up because he's got um like his waist is like really weird and he's super like floppy like for some reason now it's just his waist it's designed really weird but um it's you know helps it's pretty easy to get to stand up though it just has you know leans to the side and stuff but it's still pretty easy to get to stand and it just looks super cool and i like the back you know this whole jetpack area thing just looks really nice and they put a lot of cool details into it and everything so i can't wait to see black mana in the movie once it comes out and stuff um for weapon stuff he comes with a sword so it's just an all black sword again fitting with his outfit but it does have some red detail going on there on the handle as you can see and just really nice sword i like this much better than just the one on his gauntlet and it's an actual sword you can put in his hand and everything and then he comes with the rest of the trench warrior so we've got the body of the trench warrior and then we've got the head as well of it so we're gonna put that together once we go through all these figures and we'll see this at the very end so we'll see that in a second and from his box says once an unscrupulous treasure hunting pirate david kane transforms himself into the fearsome black mana in order to seek revenge against Aquaman so there you go you can see that he is a real person and just does this to get revenge on Aquaman so that's gonna be it for Black Manta and our last set of figures here is the two pack of the gladiator battle between Aquaman and Orm and so you can see the size difference between the two I didn't really notice much when he was in the Ocean Master costume in Aquaman but you can definitely see the size difference now between these two figures here so I'll start with Aquaman first so this is I would assume um, obviously I haven't seen the movie, but I would just assume by the thing that this is when Aquaman returns to Atlantis to start to, you know, declare himself as the king of Atlantis and take over. He, they, uh, 
go into this uh, gladiator battle to determine the true king and stuff. And so they give Aquaman this armor, which is kind of like crab shell based is what it looks like. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. So we've got this uh, helmet on here, this uh, gladiator helmet. I like this big fan on top, but it's like patinaed. So it's got the, um, it's like a copper and then it's got the um, green going all over again to look patinaed and everything. And you can see his face there. It doesn't look as good as the first version, but it's still, you know, a lot better than what the box shows for the figures. And you can see beard and everything there. Then going into his armor, so he's got this, like I said, looks like crab shell. Again, we've got a patina shoulder pad here. It looks like, you know, conch shell or some sort of shell going on there with the design and everything. And then that looks more like the crab shell or maybe like a uh, um, uh, shrimp. I can't think of what they were called, like a shrimp uh, shell or covering there. And then this definitely looks like a crab shell pieces with the texture and design of it with the gold. So I like the gold and red, uh, the gold patina color with the green there, and then just the gold in general there. And you can see his, um, under like his actual skin so you can see all his tattoo stuff you know like Jason Momoa has so you can see all the tattoos they added onto him and everything there and then again on this side he's got the gold and the red continuing on with this piece of armor onto the gauntlet there and the um it's not really patina but it is a gold color and it has some sort of like shell design going onto it there to go somewhat along with that side then we've got the Atlantean piece there it looks got the little Atlantean logo but then all sorts of other additional details going on to it on this waist piece and then you got more armor you know gold armor covering him on that side stuff so then going into the pants he just I assume wore two Atlantis and stuff just some like leather or um, just dark colored pants and going into boots they added for gladiator with some armor you know protecting his legs and stuff and then just brown shoes going on there again probably just pants and stuff that he wore just from when he arrived in Atlantis and everything. So pretty cool overall looking at the gladiator armor and just the different design and stuff of it. Looks really cool compared to his normal. And then we can go over here to Orm, which again, they're fighting. He has, you can see the beginnings of the Ocean Master helmet here with the fin design and then the stuff coming off of the side again. Looks like, you know, sea animal um, parts went into this and stuff is what it looks like then we've got, so he's all um, silver and then more of the purple and bluish colors. I like this shoulder piece here. It's a nice big like fin thing. It looks like the head of something. You know, like this would be the top head, like the forehead or something of a creature. You can see his forearm there, and then some armor there, and you can see the gloves that match his um, costume that we saw earlier, and then the nice gold uh, silver chest plate. Keep on call it gold for some reason. You can see his art, um, outfit there that we saw again earlier underneath all of this, and then he's got this big giant piece of armor on this arm. There as it goes all the way, you know, down to his fist, as you can see. Another chest, you can see his um, abs still there. Then the uh, uh, Atlantis, or uh, yeah, Atlantis, Atlantean logo there. Again, more uh, coverings for his legs going down into the shoes and stuff. They're pretty similar. Um, they're different, but similar to the last one as well. Just different armor coverings, and you can see his face there. So overall, pretty cool that you got this. Um, I don't, I'm not too interested in like the whole gladiator battle arena. It may be a cool scene and stuff once we actually see the movie. Aquaman has issues though. This figure does, but I think it's because his legs all twist around. I didn't really mess too much with it. Um, but the armor, he's definitely top heavy because of all this armor. Um, so yeah, he's definitely not necessarily a good one there he goes pretty easy for that and so then they come with their trying so this is of course the aquaman version of trying even though it's a five didn't i don't know what you'd call it um that we saw in uh justice league and stuff so we, he's got that version of the trident then orm has a, another version of his trident but um it looks much different it's much shorter and then the tongs up here are really long compared you can see the two versions and then there's the two size differences and stuff so I don't know what's going on with that uh, but they still both look really cool and I like the purple and everything with them and just from the box says in a colossal clash of the sea titans Aquaman fights against his half brother Orm to prevent a war between the surface and underwater world so there's a little bit of stuff on that so that's gonna be it for this gladiator two pack so now we have all the pieces here for the Trench Warrior. So I'm going to go ahead and put it together and I'll bring it back and we'll take a look at it. And so here's the Trench Warrior. And so I have to say overall this is not a good looking character. To me I don't like this one nearly as much as the rest of the characters from this set. But it still looks cool but just not as good. And so here we've got a look at the face. And so it got, has a piranha looking of, uh, version of me because of the mouth and stuff. You can see it's real nasty teeth. It's got like on the bottom it's you know like 
they look almost clear, but they're not. But then they're real, got like black marks in between and stuff, so they look really nasty. And it's got this movable mouth, as you can see. It's got a tongue inside there and everything. So it's got a mouth that can move, and again, it's got this fin on the back. And just this look overall right here reminds me of a piranha. No eyes or anything, so it's kind of creepy and weird stuff. But it's, you know, like a creature and everything. Um, then going down, we got the chest here. You can see all sorts of bones on the pictures on the box. It looks really nice because the bones are like, you know, actual like bone color that you can see over its body. But this time they're kind of faded and washed out and stuff. So it's not looking as good. And it's got this red detail underneath there and stuff. It looks, you know, kind of like blood. But I think it's just supposed to be the cook colors of the creature and everything then it's got these fins all over so it's got it on its back its forearms its tail it looks like a tail and on the back of its legs there as well and stuff so it's got the um fins of fish and everything um going into its arms it's got these little bone spikes everywhere on the arms as you can see there it's got these little giant claws three um prong claws with um, little sharp nails on it as you can see there um, then it's got more of the bones again this is where i wish you could see the actual bones better they're just kind of been painted over so you don't see them as well so I wish the bones along in here would have been uh, painted better to be more pronounced then it goes into the feet where they got the four toes that are all pronged and stuff and so why I'm saying this isn't as good as figure because this foot over here is messed up for some reason I don't know why but it has to stick out to the side to be able to stand because this one can twist around and move pretty easily but this one's got a thing on the back so it can't twist around and it's offset weird so it uh, kind of has to stand funny unfortunately to be able to stand at all. This one I had pretty um, big issues trying to get the stand and everything. But it still looks cool. But yeah, I don't really think worth like a uh, um, build a figure. But I guess, you know, maybe if, you know, because it's not going to be that interesting for character people wouldn't want as an actual character and stuff. And this is just an extra thing. You know, if you want to get it all, you can um, get all the figures and build it if you want it. But not really some they're trying to sell or anything. But that, I think, is going to be it for this set of the DC Multiverse set for the new Aquaman movie, where, of course, we have Aquaman, Murrah, Orm, Black Manta, and then the Trench Warrior as the Collect and Connect figure here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your opinion or what you're thinking about with the whole um, Marvel Legends versus Multiverse. Again, just the... Um, figure design, not necessarily characters. Like I said, to me, Marvel Legends is much better characters, but I think the detail and design on the um, uh, multiverse figures is better than on the uh, Marvel Legends and everything. But let me know what your opinion is, is on that down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more figure reviews, and we'll see you in the next one.